Hey everybody, uh, I'm David Gregg and I'm taking a walk down to another building at East Farm just down the hill from our office and I'm going to meet Kyle Hess who's the assistant on our coyote project. Kyle has been working on an, uh, analyzing coyote scat to learn about diet and um, he's been doing some analysis and I want to see what he's found. I thought you might be interested to tag along so let's go look at some coyote poop. The Rhode Island Natural History Survey presents videos to showcase the animals, plants, geology, and natural systems that surround us, and the people and organizations working to understand and conserve them. Hey Kyle. Hi David. How's it going? Good, how are you doing? I'm great. All right. All right. So I'm here to look at the SCAT lab. Okay. Is this the place? This is the place. All right, cool. Place. Yeah. When we get our samples from the field, they go in the freezer. Mmm, yummy. Yep. Here's an example here. Um, we code them with the date, the person who collected them, and the scat for that day. The okay. Scat for that day. And how many, how many do you have now in the freezer? We have over 200 scats now, I believe. Uh, let me take a look. We have them all in the database here. Yes, we have 209 right now. These fields are all from the um, collector app that we use. So these are actually from the field um, data that we put in. And what I'm looking for right now is the presence or absence of deer. Okay. The samples. So, so hair present was filled out by the collector. Actually, I added these three fields. Hair, confirmed year, and other. Okay. Yeah, everything prior to that, all of these other fields. Right, are so they say if that. this, like here, it's got uh, possible food resources, other food. Yeah, so these are things that would have been entered by the collector. Collector in the field. Right, Con right. yeah, on the predominant contents hair, fur, scat color matrix. What's the color for? Um, well, we're going to find out. We've, we kind of tried to include every variable that might be useful and um, we're going to see if color is associated with a particular uh, Kibble. type of yeah whether they're eating pet food source. yeah okay. absolutely they're from all over the state we um, sent volunteers and fellows absolutely in you know across the state in every town and um, had them collect mostly in places where we thought there would be a good chance of finding coyote scat. Lots of coyote reports for that area. Right. Cool. Yeah. Here it is here. I'm careful not to read where it was collected or what the collector felt was in the sample because I don't want to bias the right. results and pick it apart. Mm -hmm. So you aren't washing it down and filtering it no, at this point? No, this that's going to come later, but right now we're just looking for physical evidence of deer, and I make notes if there's other things uh, present in there, like woodchuck or uh, meadow vole or anything like that. The fur makes it through the digestive system really well, so um, fur is the main thing, but there can be bone, for mm -hmm. sure. Um, in fact, a lot of the rodent remains I find are bone, so that could be a, Got it. a big help if we find that. Um, this one has deer here in it, so the quick and dirty answer is yes, this one has deer, uh, but I am picking through it pretty extensively just so I can make a note if there are other species present in here. And this one has, it looks like it has some human material possibly here. By which you do not mean human material. <laughs> I don't mean a human, but um, anthropogenic, human, anthropogenic, human-created uh, product. So there's a big chunk of plastic right here. Okay. Which we've been finding a lot of, unfortunately. Huh. Um, yeah, I think that's actually animal tissue. Animal tissue. Yeah, that's fat. Rodent bone here. 
we had a protocol for people to analyze Scott uh, for volunteers from URI to do the analysis, and then COVID hit, and they can't do that. Right. So this so, is very much a preliminary step. Yeah, so right now this is just kind of a proof of concept to see that we can get it all to work out. And what kinds of things you can find in there. And yeah. 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 You know, okay. What tools we'll need to, to do it effectively. Right. Yeah, so the we will wash out the matrix, which is the it's essentially the meat that they were eating, which um, will possibly be identifiable, perhaps by color. Uh, we don't know yet, but um, beyond that, there's not much you can do with the matrix. So once we've weighed it and we have everything we need from that, we'll wash that out and just have the undigestible. Um, People actually, think coyotes are carnivorous, but they aren't, right? No, they are omnivores, and I've found uh, already today, I've found probably 90% of the samples had seed or uh, anthropogenic material or they found bird feathers, so it's just, they eat whatever they can get their hands on. So this is a really interesting sample uh, because we have multiple species represented here. We have probably meadow vole, um, we have rabbit, um, Is that a skull on the lower right? That brown thing. We do have a jaw here somewhere. Let's see if we can find it. Seeds. No, oh, it's a leaf. Yep, leaf. Um, seeds there. It's always there evidence of deer in there? Is that what? That There's is? no evidence of deer in this one. Um, <laughs> we have woodchuck hair for sure. We have um, rabbit fur, possibly a rabbit jawbone. Hmm. We're gonna, we're gonna uh, confirm that. There are seeds throughout. Couldn't identify the species of bird, but mm -hmm. um, we have some hollow bones and some just kind of brown feathers so cool not not the neighborhood chicken no definitely not chicken um and oh i think you had a coyote that was preying on chickens over in portsmouth yeah right? they really like backyard chickens um so i'm sure when we get to those the scat samples from portsmouth we're going to find a lot of farm animals represented there this fur here is probably vole um we found a lot of woodchuck fur in this one, too. One of the reasons we're collecting scat is because we want to know about diet. But coyotes themselves use scat in different ways. So um, how do coyotes use their scat? They'll use scat to mark their territory. Um, if they, we often find them at like a trail intersection. It's a really, it's kind of like this is my spot. This is so they go specifically to a trail intersection to poop and yep. then. Yep. Um, they'll they'll actually go right on a food item if there's you know huh. a carcass that they want to say is theirs. They go right on the. They'll go right on top of it. Um, I did a sample earlier today that was found on a seagull a gull carcass and huh. um, you know it seems pretty intentional that's totally cool right on top of that yeah. So, yeah there's a lot of meaning to to scat Natural History Survey videos are made possible through the generous contributions of members and friends. Want to help us do more environmental science and conservation? Hit the like button, share our videos with your circle, subscribe, or make a financial contribution. 
on our website, rnhs.org, or through Patreon. Thanks, and see you out there. <laughs>